The pocket knife that we're looking at today has the potential to be one of the best sport utility do everything pocket knives I have seen in quite a while. Yep, there it is for you folks. The new updated Cold Steel 4 inch Voyager. Not sure if you can see that there on frame, but now it's coming with AUS 10A steel upgraded over AUS 8 steel and i'm really looking forward to breaking this knife down for you today because as i said it has this potential to be this crossover basically do everything i've titled these in the past suck knives s-u-k sport utility knife meaning that this knife and particularly this pocket knife has the potential to be something that you could carry as a backup tactical folder you could carry it as an outdoor you know camping hiking backpacking folder and be able to do almost every tasks you would need to do around a campsite when it comes to carving, whittling, food prep, nylon cordage cutting, as well as carry it as your daily EDC. It has the potential to be able to cover all those scenarios and have you enjoy it covering those scenarios because of its layout, its value, and its capabilities that I believe this four inch Voyager has to offer. So I am really looking forward to not only showing you what the new OS 10A steel can do and how that kind of compares to some other steels out there. We'll break that all down and talk about that some, but also just run in some other competitive options and talk about what this has the potential to do for you as kind of a one and done option. So let's go ahead and break this Cold Steel Voyager four inch version out. Check this, you ready? That was out of the box, dropped like that. Let's go ahead and break this knife down. All right, guys, let's go ahead and break down the blade. I'm going to start with the handle because I really feel like that does have a big part to do with how many capabilities, how many different scenarios this knife can fall into and play into for you. Uh, now, the first thing is that it has a large handle at 5.25 inches. So this is definitely a larger handle. It will take up some more space than on average in your pocket than, say, shorter, smaller pocket knives. But at a four inches overall blade length, length and about a 3.95 3.9 cutting edge i mean it is a bigger knife and you know you you would expect that the other thing is that we're looking at a thickness on the handle which is kind of nice of uh, 0.64 so over half an inch uh, and so, you know, this is going to take up some real estate in your pocket. So you have to be prepared for that. This is not something you're going to want to put in dress slacks or dockers or something like that, or your, your suit pants. This isn't designed for that. There are other folders that would be better suited for that, but it still doesn't feel like it's taking up huge amounts in say my 511 apex pants and my cool, um, uh, I can't remember renegade pants. I think that I regularly wear my jeans, you know, I mean, it's totally fine. Uh, and then you are looking at a weight on, on the blade HQ website. It says 4.65 ounces. My scale says 4.9. I'm going to say under, you know, five ounces. So right in between four and a half and five ounces, which for the size and the handle length and all of that is phenomenal. Now you are going to have a polymer handle or Zytel handle scales basically, but it does come with steel liners in there. So you guys can see that hopefully. So you are getting some nice strength on top of the Zytel. So this is a very strong, strong folder, and I love that aspect of it. So now the thing that's great also with that Zytel is they've textured the heck out of that. Now for grip, it's fantastic. We'll talk about how it rides in the pocket here in just a moment, but just wanted to show you that diamond texturing that they have put on this really is going to give you good, good, solid grip without it being, you know, super hot. It's not going to cause hot spots or tearing in your hand or, you know, like, oh man, this is uncomfortable, it, but it is giving you heavy traction. So again, great for harder use tasks, either in law enforcement or military possibly, or outdoors where you're hot, it's sweaty, you're putting a lot of pressure on the knife, um, you know, construction sites, those type of things. It's going to be great for those heavy duty, you need a, a good solid grip on the knife. Now, just to give us some hand perspective here, I wear large size gloves, as you guys who follow the channel regularly know. I got a huge deep cut in right there. Feels great. Gonna contour well to all the rest of my hands, even this little cut in back here for my, or my fingers, for my pinky back there. So I am totally locked in this natural hammer grip with even that little hook out the back. Now, what makes this a sport utility knife or suck knife for me, and not suck as an S-U-C-K, but S-U-K, 
uh, is that it has a giant ricasso right here. That ricasso is about an inch and a quarter, which means that you're able to choke up. And now I put my middle finger right there, and I have a great platform for my index finger to be able to choke up and do really fine carving, whittling, uh, food prep, you know, really fine motor skill required t cutting tasks, even be able to do a, more of a line pinch grip for maybe skinning or something like that, or just really fine cutting with a piece of meat or something like that. And it feels great. So I have fantastic close up control if needed, but then I have that general utility control right here. So I can do really fast cuts and slicing and slashing, whatever I would need to do piercing. And I'm not going to slide up and accidentally hurt myself. And then even in a reverse grip, I have this great cut in again, I'm not gonna slide up and hurt myself in this huge platform back here for my thumb to really rest to get that really good leverage for a stabbing motion in, in a reverse grip. So I have a really good platform right there. My thumb's not gonna wanna slide off and I have that extra pressure that if I need to, I can do that. So that's why I really am impressed with the multiple areas of um, just control and a able to really grip the knife in a really fantastic way for lots of different cutting tasks. All right, now for uh, the exciting point, the, the blade end. It's always my favorite part is usually doing the, the blade portion of the knife. And as I said uh, throughout the video, four inches overall, they have lots of different um, options that are out there, different sizes, different blade shapes, serrated, non, tanto, non, um, recurve, I think even. I mean, they got lots of different Voyager sizes. Again, this is the four inch version. Uh, what we're looking at is basically a full flat grind with a clipped swedge on top. And uh, we're looking at a maximum thickness back there by the, the studs of 0 0.13, tapering down to that nice precise tip. And again, with that clip, really well done. Great relief edge. If you've ever owned a cold steel, you know that they make razor sharp knives and that is no exception with this blade. So we got a really good, nice kind of straight portion there back near the handle and then into a really good belly. And again, with that nice clip, just the aesthetics are super nice. We have that kind of satin, uh, yeah, it's a satin finish, satin finish on the blade which is really nice as well. And with the basically almost four inches overall, you know, blade size and with that drop into that clip, that again offers us, particularly with this blade shape, a lot of capabilities, not only for food prep, uh, and, you know, doing that around a campsite, again, like I said, just around the house, whatever, great for that type of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, outdoors, carving, whittling, making, you know, feather sticks, making notches. It's going to give you a lot of capability in that way as well. And then if you needed to do stabbing, piercing, slashing, nylon rope, you know, that type of thing, it gives you enough belly and then that nice drop into that precise clip to be able to stab and penetrate well for more hard use, either if you will, quote unquote, tactical use or whatever it is. So uh, re regardless if you're doing it for around town and the cardboard and the nylon and the rubber and, you know, all that stuff and you're just general utility or something more specific, I think you, depending on what you want to deploy it in, you're going to get fantastic results with the overall blade shape and performance. So we're doing a quick cutaway because I'm not only testing out the brand new GoPro 7 with uh, the Hyper Smooth, so I'm seeing how that works, um, but also testing out its audio. And we're going to talk about the edge retention of the AUS 10A steel on uh, this Cold Steel Voyager. Now, uh, guys, I've done some rope cutting tests in the past. I hate doing rope cutting tests, uh, and uh, mine are not uh, scientific by any means. But somebody online, a fellow YouTuber, uh, buddy, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Cedric and Ada Gear and Outdoors, uh, he has kind of made a name for himself by doing some of the best uh, edge retention and rope cutting tests on the market for steels. Lots and lots of steels is kind of what he's done. He and I have commented back and forth. I enjoy his content a lot and it's really good. And he does a much better data point um, than I can do. And I just don't like sitting there for 20 minutes cutting rope and he, he enjoys it and he's kind of made a name for himself doing that. So I'm not gonna do a rope cutting test. Uh, he has tested out Cold Steel's uh, AUS 10A. And it, it seems to, compared to his other tests, which are all similar and you can i'll have a link in the description below over to his youtube channel you should go check it out particularly if you want to know more about the steel but this aus uh 10a is holding up extremely well 
with his rope cutting tests uh, and the link that I'll have, we'll have that this particular video. He had 140 passes. And just to give you some perspective, um, the D2 on the Rat Model 1 from Ontario was able to do 120 passes on the rope that he tests. Uh, 154 cm can do about 120. Uh, Sandvik 14 c 28 n from a couple real steels were doing like around 70. So, and then normal OS 8 uh, is able to do like 60 to 70 passes. So, I mean, this is like double what you see on like OS 8 for his testing. And I, that's what I'm going to go off of because I've, I've enjoyed watching his stuff and I'm not going to sit here and try and do a rope cutting test and trying to compare it and do all that. So, uh, all I have to say is based off of data points, not only that I have personally seen with my Test, testing just with cardboard and rubber and all that it's holding a very good edge but also uh compared to other people out there including cedric um that uh is producing very good results in edge retention in the data points that we can give you guys so just take that in consideration but i think it's a great steal for the price that we're getting and definitely going to hold an edge better than old os 8 that cold steel used to use on the old voyagers so one of the other great things is the price with this folder. Now, with everything that we're looking at today, I think that the price that I paid for it, which was $48 on Amazon, is fantastic. Under the $50 price point, we're getting a better steal than OS 8 or 8CR 13MOV or 14MOV or you know 420 high carbon. We're definitely getting something that's performing better than that. We're getting the crazy triad locking system and then again, all the other features and ambidextrous and just all of the stuff that you know you get from cold steel and just its overall just strength. And so for the basically $50 price point, you're getting a great value to performance in my opinion. So we'll have links in the description below over to Amazon as well as Blade HQ. Really helps us out when you guys use those hyperlinks. Helps me get out here, buy blades just like this to make content just like this. You guys help support the channel by using those hyperlinks and subscribing and thumbs upping and sharing. So I really appreciate that. I also want to remind you about our Knock Around Sunglass Affiliate link. Great sunglasses for the whole family and backcountry.com. Great apparel, other options that are out there. Lots of stuff that you see reviewed here at the channel. You can pick up for a discount Kind of prices over there and some gear that you can't pick up on Amazon backcountry.com does carry as well as well as like last year model stuff and they have a lot of sales going on all the time so check out all those hyperlinks that we have for you below and it helps us continue to make content for you guys week in week out. Now, if you've ever had a cold steel before, you know that they are ambidextrous, most of their knives, uh, but they will send you a separate pocket clip. So that is, it comes with the box. So if you're a lefty, you just would unscrew the one that comes righty attached and screw on the left-handed one. So uh, that's something to note. Good pocket clip, gonna give you a pretty decent uh, higher ride so you can easily pinch it out and pull it out of your pocket, which is a good thing. And uh, blacked out, so that's all good. There's no real issue there. This is my one sticking point. This is one of the harder pocket clips I've had to work with in my life life and this is really the only sticking point for the knife itself is that i don't know if you guys can pick up on that but i have actually had to take the pocket clip off and file down this diamond texturing because it was so tight against that diamond texturing that i could almost it was almost impossible for me to put it into my pocket and then when i would pull it out i mean i pulled my whole pant leg up with it and it would just th destroy my pants uh, so i actually unscrewed it i have filed that down so there's a flat about one inch portion underneath where the pocket clip uh, comes into contact with the the handle but even then this this loop right here is not quite high enough to get over any double reinforced pocket like on most of my 511s or cool pants so i'm gonna have to unscrew it again and even pry it up a little bit more just so it'll catch and get over the lip initially and then ride fine uh, so you're going to have to do, my opinion is, regardless of who you are, you're going to have to do a little work on that pocket clip if you're going to take it. Prepare for that. To either file it down just with a file. I mean, I just used one on my Leatherman tool. It took me, you know, two minutes to do it just to smooth it out so that it doesn't tear up your pocket as much. And then you might need to bend this little tip up a little bit with your pliers just to kind of get a better higher off the body. So I would have liked to see that a little bit tweaked. There are other ways you can do that too. I believe Nothing Fancy has a video where you can use some polymer kind of gunk material and kind of fill in the gaps. And that's another way that you can do it as well. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can mod that, but you will want to mod the, the material underneath the pocket clip, in my opinion, if you're going to plan on carrying it in your pocket. All right, guys, so next up, deployment. I mean, it's super easy to see that we have a huge cut in, nice thumb studs. You can adjust those. They, I think they've done something a little bit different in recent years where they've tried to make them completely ambidextrous now so that 
yeah, they are. You can see that they're they're equal on either side, and that's a good thing. I like that. Now you can adjust it if you want to. There's a flathead notch there that you could if you want to, but now they are completely ambidextrous, the same distance out on either side. I think that's a really good thing, and. Uh, Cold Steel is kind of known with their triad locking system. One for being, and I love the triad locking system. I have batoned with uh, Recon One, uh, and which is one of their other triad locking folders, and it did not break the knife and did not even damage the locking mechanism. I don't recommend it, but you could do that. And this is a, just a fantastic lockback system. Um, but they tend to sometimes be kind of sticky out of the box. Uh, you kind of got to really work on them for a few days before they'll be loosened up. And even then, they can be sometimes really hard to disengage. Not the case. Out of the box on this one, I barely even have to flick the wrist. And the blade flew open. Really good locking mechanism there. We have a huge stop pin that I'll show you. But I was able to do a drop close by just depressing that. And boom, the blade swings into place. We, that Ricasso again hits my finger so I can close it one-handed, which is really nice as well. I'm not going to nick my finger. But you can see there... That stop bar as well, stop pin, really nice and strong and big there. But I was super impressed with how, I'm going to see if I can do it without flicking. There you go. Didn't even flick the wrist and was able to deploy that and drop it with no work in time. I don't know if they're doing something a little bit different with their deployment in here. Maybe, I think I saw Teflon maybe bushings in there. I'll annotate in if I can figure it out. I might call Cold Steel and ask them, hey, what are you guys doing, if anything different? But um, that, that's just a way smoother, even than my older, this is in, what is this? Uh, CTS uh, XHP version of the Lawman. Uh, it, it, at, this took about like two months to get to that point. And even then it's not just, it's just not quite as smooth as the Voyager. And since I br just brought that on the frame here, um, I will show you guys just for size perspective. The Voyager is a big knife. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's the lawman. That's a three and a half inch overall blade. And you can see that the Voyager is definitely a bigger, thicker blade overall. But you're getting a lot more, I believe, performance in the sense of more handle grip. You know, this is way thinner. Great for EDC, but not necessarily my first choice for uh, something where I need a lot of, of heavy grip um, on a folder. So super nice in that way, but great locking mechanism, great deployment, and smoother than uh, older cold steels that I've had in the past. Bam! Yeah, folks. Uh, I, I, I believe it. I'm a believer in this knife. Um, this thing has so much potential. It's really up to you on what you want out of your knife. I believe the Voyager 4 inch now with this uh, slightly upgraded steel and just the, the price to everything you're getting is just nuts. And I think that regardless, if you're gonna throw it in your go bag and or you know tactical bag for you know your rig or whatever it is, um, you know, or you're carrying it on your next camping trip or backpacking trip, or you're just EDC in a good size folder, it's gonna be a great knife that I believe is gonna do a lot for you and it is a dependable layout and dependable strength that we know from uh, Cold Steel. So if you've been thinking about it or it hasn't been on your radar and now it is, guys, you won't be sorry. I'm totally digging, totally in love with this folder. Even that drop, man. This is one of the smoothest uh, cold steels I've ever owned. I don't know if they're tweaking some of that stuff, man. I mean, it's awesome. So I just hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's giving you food for thought, pointing you in the right direction, and showing you whether or not the Voyager is going to be the right tool for you. They have lots of other blade shapes as well and sizes. They have huge ones and minis and everything in between. So check them out if uh, they haven't been on your radar they should be now. So uh, check us out on Instagram, uh, Facebook, all the social media. If you're not a current subscriber, I invite you to become part of the GT family and subscribe. Hit that subscription button. Check out the next video popping up right here, right now. If you are a current subscriber, make sure you've hit that bell icon. That makes sure that the videos are in your news feed. If you haven't hit that bell icon, it may not show up in your news feed. You may miss some of the videos that we throw up every week here. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.